Welcome to the show today. I've got something that you need to be thinking about. Do you work out with a timer? Do So do I or do like... General workouts, men's fitness, trying to stay in shape. Do you use a timer? My best workouts, yes. Right. Okay. And then the, the, the ones that aren't so good, no Let, timer? Let's not say the ones that aren't so good. Let's just say the ones that are the rest of them. Like it's most workouts I do, don't I don't have a timer. I have to say that I've used timers when I'm training large groups, kind of got away from that in my own personal training. And then starting to kind of get back in the mentality of using timers. And it, it kind of parallels what you get out of CrossFit. The CrossFit thing, whether or not you believe in those compound movements for inexperienced people that are training, the mentality of just working out until you are cashed. It has a lot of psychological benefits, makes your body feel good, you get stronger, you got to use a timer. So so you're saying a timer is going to push you to a workout, uh, we'll say a mecca of workout. It's just higher than your standard get It's an easy, easy motivational piece. You got a guy oh, okay. over your shoulder kind of hollering at you and saying this. That's one version. But if you have a timer that says, hey, we can only be in this room for 30 right. minutes, you're going to push yourself. And you look back over to it and you see you've only got 10 seconds left for this workout. I can do 10 seconds of work. If anybody's into like bodybuilding, that particular segment, right? If you had a clock on you that said you only had 45 minutes, let me explain here. Okay. Okay. If I only got 45 minutes and I know that I got to get through X amount of sets, mm -hmm. it's going to shorten my restorations maybe just a little bit, make you put the which, phone down. Which you can it's, clock in the beginning. Like I want to make sure that I do these five things right. and I want each one to take you know, five minutes of time. Say you, Give say, myself you a timer. Yeah, say you start the concept with a stopwatch. I'm mm -hmm. going to pound through this workout. I'm going to move with a lot of pace, tons of intensity. It took me 39 minutes. Okay. Well now my uh, next time I work out timers at 39 minutes, you better get in, you better get out. Cause you want to get through all the sets. Now it can be different too. If you're looking for like a cardio aspect and you mm -hmm. know that sometimes you get on the elliptical and you have a killer workout at 20 minutes at 28, you kind of start slacking off and whatnot. So maybe your timers at 20, you're like, man, I got to try to burn 400 calories in 20 minutes. I better pick it up. No, that's, so, that's a big, that's a big timer. Like you're, you're talking about like a full length in the gym timer. Have you heard of the Tabata timers? That would work as well. I, okay. I, I used to use those all the time. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So you know. what's, what's the benefit that a Tabata timer is going to give me that just having a, I have 39 minutes in the gym. Um, the difference to me is a Tabata requires a little bit more planning. And if, if you know what I mean, like you, you got to kind of know what the whole workout looks like mm -hmm. to know the cycles that you should be on while you're doing the dance. So you got to you got to actually go in with a, a prescribed workout of some sort. Yeah, the easiest way to run some of them Tabata, Tabata timers is, you know, if, if I'm going to do like a three set sequence, I have my rest period in there, but it kind of keeps me on pace. That's all great. But when the fifth one comes around, if you're not already knowing what exercise you're going to be doing, mm -hmm. all of a sudden your times are all off. Oh, shoot, I didn't start on time. I, so have to do thing. I should wait. I should wait, you know, and. If you have a little bit of planning or you already know what you're going to work out, great way to do it as well, for sure. And there's, to be clear, there's like a lot of places you can find Tabata workouts and I mean, just yeah, copy one. Yeah, free apps, um, you know, any of the platforms, they all have all the nonsense, but you can use a little app on the phone that mm -hmm. gives you your buzzards and everything. But uh, generally speaking, the timer to me is a bit of a game changer. It turns it up a little bit. Have okay. you been, have you done Tabata or just general, like, hey, I only have 40 minutes and kind of like stuck yep. to it. So every every year I try and get ready for the Murph. And I am a bit of a sissy and then I haven't done full out yet and done the full weight vest and everything. But m to me, it was just I wanted to make sure that I could at least participate in the movements of it. Okay. As I got, it seems like every year at around springtime, I get an injury. Yeah. And so this is the first year I've felt like pretty solid in the spring. It'll come. There's it, still time. You still got a couple got, weeks yeah, to got, blow something up. I got I got a knee injury on the horizon. <laughs> so uh, this year I, I got a chance to actually go full workout best. And so the the Murph, if anyone doesn't know it, is you're doing, um, let's see, you're doing 100 push-ups. Nope, you're doing 100 pull-ups. You're doing 200 push-ups. And you're doing 300 like air squats. But all of it's supposed to be with a weighted, a weighted vest. Nice. Before you start, you're going to do a mile run. After you're done, you do a mile run. So that's the whole workout. And then and then most people do it uh, on Memorial Day, basically. And so I try and get into that every year. And I try can and do get that. It's, uh, I've actually, I, I've heard of the Murph, but to be honest, I've never done it. I might have to get in there. Pop in there. It's So I don't want to say it's an easy workout. So but, mile, mm -hmm. 200, 100, or does the order, is that It doesn't really matter. So the way it works out most of the time is you'll, you'll run your mile, you'll come into the gym, and you'll kind of build a, a set of like, I'm going to do... 
uh, five pull-ups. I'm going to do 10 push-ups. So you don't have to do them all in a row. It's not like don't leave the pull-up bar till you right. hit your number. Now you could do it that way. It's really nebulous. Just get the workout done. Is gotcha. really the way it goes. Is there an end timing for this thing? Like you have to get it in a certain amount of time or are you just trying to get your best? You can set that time. There are times that, that will give you like, oh, if you do it in under an hour with this pound weight, you're, you know, you're in this role of athlete. Um, but most of the time, what I kind of do is I try and make it in under an hour and uh, I increase the weight vest every year until I'm at the hour mark. And if I'm way under, I should have put on more weight. Right. So that's kind of where I go. And I, and I think the thing, the reason I like it is what's the point of the weighted vest, by the way, it just increases your, your load. Cause like when I do pull-ups, like I can crank out, you know, 15 pull-ups just, just right now on my weight. Um, so I, over the course of doing this workout, cracking out a hundred wouldn't be nearly as bad because it's not that big a deal. Right. But when you put a weighted vest on there, now I'm back sure, up to sure. my maximal effort. I didn't know if there was any significance as if like the true Murph needed X amount of weight or if um, it was just uh Now this of, is this is coming from an uneducated position, but I think a lot of it has to do with like, if it's not a weighted vest, it's a rucksack because uh, a lot of those workouts pay homage to a, uh, a fallen member of the military. Oh, okay. And so gotcha. I, I think a lot of it has to do with that. And I apologize to any like true Murph heads out there that, I, that I'm insulting on this but yeah i think that has another aspect of it interesting i actually so, haven't been doing much running with vests or anything ever I, i'll have to give it a try i've never segmented into that because i always kind of had like an arch thing that would always occur mm -hmm. after i ran with too much of a load we used to drag lots of things in mm -hmm. college and i always got this arch deal after a while because my calf would lock up mm -hmm. so if it's feeling good i try to you know baby it a little bit you no, know? i get it i get it so back to the tabata thing right what I found to train for it was I would set up a Tabata exercise that was like, hey, on every minute and a half, you're going to start a, a series of, you know, five pull-ups, uh, 10 push-ups, and 15 um, squats. Right. And then when the minute and a half is up, you do it again, and you do it again. And so our Tabata had no rest other than what you've accumulated from getting done with your workout. Oh, getting it, done sooner at certain sets. Get done sooner, you get more rest. And then as soon as the thing dings again, you start again. And so it, that was our run of it. And it made it so that you had a very narrow band that you're working out in, but it was aggressive. It's kind of funny because, you know, if you are a hardcore worker outer or -er, you're a mm -hmm. bodybuilder, you're into doing some kind of shows or physique. It's interesting because you can always look at this and go, you don't need a timer to work out. And I right. would agree. You don't. No, but I will tell you that is one of the best tools that you can have to kind of kick your workouts up. If they're a little stale, I almost think that back in the day when P90X was such a thing, mm -hmm. one of the biggest reasons why it was so cool because there was timing involved and everything was so structured that all you had to think about was giving it your all in that right. window and God, Tony Horton was so good. Yeah. That dude, <laughs> that dude's, I'm motivated just thinking about the man again. Like, yeah. Well, I, so here's the other thing too about the timer. Cause I think this is another aspect when I'm working out and I find that I've now gotten strong enough or cardio enough or whatever enough. And the minute and a half is too long. I chop out 10 seconds and now I'm back into a hard workout again. Right. Because I'm, I'm upping the intensity. And I think that's the part that the timer helps you establish. Yeah, that workout that used to be hard isn't hard anymore, but I didn't realize it wasn't hard. But now that I'm gauging it against a time that makes it really easy, yeah. we'll reduce the time and now it sucks again. Well, it's easy to be a lifer and just kind of slowly, but surely you get better and better at the movements. You get a little bit lazier at the movements. You're stronger than you used to be. So then you find yourself mm -hmm. using the same weights. Uh, it's a slippery slope. You know, uh, the timer can be a, a pretty darn good tool. All right. So, so we've talked about kind of the physical aspect, like you, you can aggressively get better physically using a timer, mm -hmm. but I think you also alluded to like, there's a mental side of this. Well, I tell you, I've always found that it, every time that I get to working out or working with these large groups of people I used to all the time, it was kind of funny because you would see that when they would crush it, kill it, crazy workout, everybody just felt so much better. And over time has gone on of, you know, the kid thing and me moving in and out of like 
segments of working out really hard or segments of kind of getting in the lows of missing workouts and, and that type of thing, you can feel the way that it, it changes how you're doing. If you're really crushing workouts, man, you just feel so much more relaxed. Mm-hmm. You're more engaging with people. There's not so much stress in your life. And it, a lot of it just has to do with mood, you know, going through the motions, doing the same old, same old, that workout starts to not have any impact on the way that you feel. Right. But the idea of unconditional grind and pain and pushing through a workout, the end result is a completely different mindset leaving that workout. And there's some, there's some biology to that, right? I'm sure. So for instance, dopamine smash. Yeah. I mean, I mean that that's a reality when you crush your muscles and push yourself to doing something very, very difficult. Like there's an amount of adrenaline that has to accompany it. Oh yeah. And when you hit an adrenaline spike, you get that, that wave afterwards of like, yeah complete relaxation yeah like a release yeah but then afterwards you get the dopamine hit you get the uh, sense of accomplishment i did something hard today and i won it's kind of crazy though as time goes on the more you're doing workouts like how much that literally disappears if Mm -hmm. you don't have some kind of a kick in the tail you know what i mean right because you if you do the exact same workout it doesn't feel as accomplished by the end of the fifth week even if you think about extending your rest periods you just pull up the phone Mm -hmm. Instagram flips, you pull those rest periods they are a little bit longer than normal. You probably could even give yourself the same intensity, but if you start extending rest periods in your hour workout turn to be an hour 45, it's not near as taxing. Yeah. And, and after the end of it, you don't feel as accomplished. It feels like it was routine. It feels like it was just a part of the day. And I think, have you, um, there's a, I believe he's a Navy man. Uh, he, he's gone all over YouTube and gone all over all kinds of places with his big thing. Like if you want to, if you want to have a better life, make your bed every day. Have you seen this guy? I think I've seen the clip. Yeah. Start your day with, uh, yeah. He was given maybe, uh, uh, a like speech a, to like graduates kids or, or something. something. Yeah, yeah. 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 Graduates. Yeah. And he basically says, uh, get up there and make your bed every day. And it, it starts your day off with a win. You've picked something, you've accomplished something. It's the very first thing you did. So now you're you're already in the win category. Well, the, a win begets a win, begets a win, begets a win. Like you become the person that wins because every morning when I wake up, I start winning. It's interesting. I don't know that I ever listened to the whole thing all the way through, but it's an interesting concept. Yeah. Well, the same thing can be true when we sit here and we talk about like the workouts. If one of the early things you do in a day is you work out and you work out hard. And you accomplish that. You get that adrenaline dump. You get that dopamine spike afterwards. You get that release. Like you started off with a big win. Now you're gonna ru- you're gonna coast that whole day on this great win. That like man, I can start tacking wins after that pretty easily. Sure, it's a pretty good tactic. Hey, so spice up your workouts a little bit. Use a timer. Use Tabata techniques, or even just a stopwatch. You can only do all these sets in a certain amount of time. If you need more workout advice or want to check out some of our other podcasts, head to kbandstraining.com. We've got them there.